But really, it's all about that compression. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And sharing that artwork to the world of social media can be quite daunting because my beautiful artwork in the Photoshops gets compressed down into Frankenstein's monster when it goes to things like Facebook and the Instagram. So today we're going to explore the process that I go through for every single one of my images that goes out to social media. We're going to explore things like image size and compression and a way to save your files in Photoshop to prepare them for the information superhighway. So with that, let's hit the Photoshop and practice some compression of our own. So to prepare our files for social media, we can pay attention to things like sharpening the image, enhancing colors and contrast and so forth. But the key element that we have to alter with our original image in Photoshop is the image size itself. We need to alter the image size to match the preferred image size for whatever social media platform we're going to with the file. So let's start with Facebook. The preferred image size for Facebook in 2020 is to change the long edge of your image to be 1200 pixels. How do we do that? It's actually pretty simple. Let's come up to image, image size, and that'll bring up the image size dialog. Now, before we alter anything, I want to point out a few different elements in this dialog. First, the file size right now is 86 megabytes for this original full resolution file. Here are the two dimensions. If we change the height, which is the longest edge of this file, to 1200 pixels, the width automatically changed with it. Why? Because constraint proportions is active on the image and that's indicated by this little link with these two lines. If constraint proportions was not active, when we change the height to 1200 pixels, the width would have stayed its original size and it would have stretched out the image and look horrible. So make sure the constraint proportions is active on your image before you change anything. Now let's also note that the new file size after the image size change will become 2.75 megabytes. That's a lot of data that Photoshop is throwing out when you change the image size. So make sure that you save a full resolution version of your artwork before you change the image size. Because if you were to change this down to the 1200 pixels and then later on want to upscale it back to 6000 pixels, you simply will not have the data in the image to be able to do that. So make sure you have that full resolution version of your images before you do anything to change it with image size. So once we're ready, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now the image becomes visibly smaller in Photoshop. If we zoom in and look at her face, her face is a little bit pixelated. That's a reflection again of all of that lost data in the image. So I'm going to hit Control or Command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out. The next thing we need to do is to use a special option in Photoshop to save the file to optimize it for the web. And that's called save for the web. So in older versions of Photoshop, it used to be under the file menu right underneath save as. So you would have save, save as, and then save for the web. A few generations ago for Photoshop, it was moved by Adobe to the export window. So if you come to export under file and then come down to save for web, that'll bring up the save for web dialog. Now there's a few things to unpack in this. So let's start with the original tab. The original tab is showing you the full view of your image as it is in Photoshop right now. We can see the file size is 2.75 megabytes. We can see the color space and so forth. When I click the optimize tab, the optimize tab is going to show you what your image will actually look like when it goes out to the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and click it, but look at her face right now on the original view. All the colors in this space, the red, the orange, yellows, and so forth. Look at all that color, and when I click optimize, everything becomes a little bit more vibrant. Why? Because the first option of customization that I have done in this dialogue to prepare this artwork to go to the internet is I have checked this box that says convert to sRGB. So it's changing the color space of my original artwork to be sRGB. sRGB is the preferred color space for the internet. For any website, any browser, anything that's on the internet, it's in a color space of sRGB. Now, if you're not familiar with color spaces or how to set them or change them, take a look at the card above and that will take you to the retouching series, specifically the video where I talk about Adobe Camera Raw and you'll find everything you need to know in there. So. Checking this is the reason why the colors are changing. The next thing that we need to do is we need to pick a file format that we want to save our file as. So the options are GIF, and it's pronounced GIF, not GIF, 
because it's not a peanut butter and there's a G in it. The next option is JPEG, PNG 8 and 24. PNGs are good options, especially if you're trying to preserve the transparency in the image or have the image interact in websites where you need other background elements to be able to come through. If you do save in PNG, I recommend PNG 24 because it's gonna give you maximum color space and choices of colors in the file compression itself. The last option is WBMP, which is a bitmap. So I'm gonna choose JPEG because most of the time, if you're pushing out your artwork to Facebook or social media, Instagram, and so forth, you can just save it as a JPEG file format. Now, when we save it in a file format of JPEG, the next thing we have to choose is a compression level for the image. So keep in mind, if you didn't go through the process of changing the image size first, you just saved it as a big file and then you send it off to Facebook, Facebook's algorithm is going to compress it down. It is going to alter the image size and it's going to choose a new level of compression for the file format itself because Facebook's goal, Instagram's goal, is to load images very, very quickly. Why? Because we live in an age where we have high speed internet and we've been kind of accustomed to things moving quickly. So there's all kinds of studies and so forth that talk about humans retention of all the tension when they're on websites and you need it to happen incredibly quickly. So even at 2.75 megabytes, that isn't that big of a file size. So in the, the high speed internet world that we live in today, that's not the end of the world, that should render very quickly. But keep in mind, if you have a website and you have a portfolio of your artwork there and you have 30 images and you send that link to a prospective client, so they're gonna check out your portfolio and they decide to look at your website on their phone and their phone doesn't have a good internet connection. As they begin to scroll through 30 files at 2.75 megabytes, it's potentially possible they may not render very quickly. Your client doesn't want to wait, they may skip past you and go to your competitor. There's a hundred other reasons, thousands of reasons why you need small file sizes so they render quickly but the catch is the smaller the file size the less quality you have in your image so that's where you have to kind of make a distinction for yourself so under optimize right now if we choose jpeg at a quality level of 100 which is the maximum option we can see that the file size is going to be 474.2 kilobytes that's incredibly small that's less than a megabyte so we're pretty good at this level but if we did not change the image size down to the 1200 pixels if we did something else a different image size or not change it at all we would see a reflection of a much larger file size than this so that's where quality is going to come into play where we can reduce the level of quality which will reduce the overall file size it's just a guessing game of how far you can push that level until you start to really have a crappy looking photo. So I'm going to leave this one at a quality level of 100 because this one single image being loaded up on Facebook is not going to take any time to load at all. It should be fine. And one little minor thing I want to throw out there for the folks who grew up in the beginning of the information superhighway, Photoshop gives you an option to project how long it would take to download this file if you were using a 14.4 modem. 9600 bits per second modem. I had a 2800 baud modem at the beginning of time. So if any of you young folks are watching my channel, thanks for watching. I'm really rad and cool. But you can see here, like a 14.4 modem was like the cool thing back in the day. Like that enabled online gaming and that changed my world forever. But this gives you, uh, shows you how quickly it would be downloaded at 14.4 and it would take 338 seconds, 338 seconds to download an image that is half of a meg. Like it should take a second <laughs> in today's age, even less than a second. And it would take 338 seconds for a 14.4. So you folks who are young, you can realize the pain that we went through back in the day. So the next thing that we would do now is that all these other options through here, this is just uh, the color table and things that you would see if you're wanting to work with image size. One, do, one thing that I do want to point out though, is that you have the option here to choose copyright and copyright uh, contact info. You can leave it non-copyright, copyright and contact info and so forth. You can give information to your file in Photoshop under file and then go to image information and you can add things like your name. And if you have went through the process of copyright protecting your image in the United States, you can link that copyright number and an actual website link so that you can protect your image online. Now, is it going to stop people from stealing it and using it? Of course not. But ultimately, you can put that information in there. And with that information embedded into the metadata of your image, ultimately, that's going to help you with SEO. 
And SEO is a big key factor when you save your files for the internet. So the next option would be to click save and that would take you to your web browser or your Windows browsers to be able to save your file. Change your file name. Don't name your files girl in sunset. Name it things like fashion photography in Phoenix, Arizona, gorgeous sunset because those keywords can get picked up by the web crawlers and help the SEO or the search engine optimization of your artwork. Now, don't name your file like 60 different words like girl, hair, sunset, pretty sky, air, reality, reimagine, because the day of being able to use all those keywords to help you get noticed on the internet are long gone. You can actually be penalized by Google if you use too many words that do not make sense or are not applicable to the image. So change the file names to be something that's appropriate to the file and the artwork. Just use discretion when you do it. So that's the process I would go through for preparing this file for Facebook. Now let's explore what we would go through for Instagram. So the preferred image size for Instagram is to change the width and the height of your image both to be 1080 pixels, 1080 pixels. So ultimately to make your image a square. So what I like to do is to create a new document by hitting control or command and the letter N. The new document, I'm going to make sure that the width and the height is set to 1080 pixels. Resolution 300, 16 bit, that's fine because we're going to be saving this new document going through the same process that we did save for web as we did with Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create. That brings up this new square. I'm going to hit control or command and the minus key to zoom out just a little bit because we're going to need to do some resizing here in just a moment. Now, one thing I want you to know is I went one step back in my history from previously. So I have returned this image to its original image size because I am preparing an entirely new document to be saved for the web that will be the file that I push to Instagram. So I'm going to hit V for the move tool, hold the shift key, click anywhere on this image and drag it up to the tab that says untitled one, then bring my mouse down. And because I was holding shift, no matter where I position my mouse, it's going to drop the new image precisely into the center of this document. If I hit control or command on the number zero, we'll zoom all the way back out. And while I'm on the move tool, I can see the transform controls around the entire image that shows me the outer perimeter of this image and allows me to transform it. If you do not see those controls while you're on the move tool, simply come up to here and check this box that says show transform controls. Now I'm gonna grab any corner of this file and hold the alt or option key. And by holding that key, it will resize all of those boxes at once. And I'm going to resize the entire file until I fit it just outside the two edges are just outside the new document itself so i can make sure that there isn't any little white tiny strip at the top then i'm going to hit enter to accept that transformation if i zoom in i have the same level of pixelation as i had before when we used image size to prepare the file for facebook itself now I could save it just like this because we have our document as a square so I could go to save for web and push it out from there. But I don't like to do that because ultimately this doesn't quite have the impact of the original image. So I want to prepare this new document almost as if it's its own piece of artwork to go to Instagram. So what I like to do is to come to this layer, duplicate it by hit control or command and the letter J. Then take the original layer itself. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit by hitting control or command and the minus key and then hit V for the move tool. And I'm going to resize this image, holding alt or option, grabbing one of those corners and resize it until it fits the entire square. Then hit enter. And then I'm going to give this a significant blur using Gaussian blur. So I'm going to come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and 161 pixels is fine because look at the background now. I'm gonna hit okay. That background has been blurred out, so there isn't any defining details into it, but we have this feeling of a color cascade, a gradient of colors, and it matches the overall color cascade that we see in the artwork itself because it's using the original image to create that. So ultimately, this entire piece feels like it has more impact. It, it matches. I don't have the bright white borders, or you could choose black or just a primary color. I use the image itself and the colors existing in the image itself to give me that background. The last thing that I like to do is to come to the new layer that we duplicated, come down to FX and give it an outer glow. And I choose a color that is appropriate to the scene itself. So I'm gonna click this area and choose maybe a deep red that's on her dress and then hit okay. The opacity of this color has been reduced to 35%. So it isn't super vibrant and strong. I simply want something to give it 
a feeling like the image is coming away from the new document that we created. So opacity is set to 35%. The size of the glow is significant. It's big so that there isn't a defined pattern for it. And then hit OK. And now when we look at it, we feel like the image is kind of leaping away from the background. We have this beautiful cascade of colors in the background and everything matches the scene itself. It has the impact of the artwork. So at this point, I would go ahead and flatten this by coming up to layer, flatten image so that it is one background and then repeat the process, come to file, export, save for the web and then go through the same process to save it optimizing it at maximum of 100 because again we can see that it's three 391 kilobytes that's a pretty small file size we should be good to go uh, it's converted to srgb so everything is great we would hit save and then put it into the social media file container so the last thing that i want to show you is how to prepare a file for your instagram story or your facebook story so for the Instagram and Facebook story, the preferred image size is to have a 1920 by 1080 document. So it's not a square anymore, it's a rectangle. So I'm going to go through the same process as I did before for making something for Instagram. I'm going to hit Control or Command and letter N to make a new document. This time I'm going to make sure that the height of the image is 1920 by 1080 and then hit Create. And that makes this new document. I'll come to the original image. Again, the image size of this is the full size version of this. I'm making an entirely new document. Hit V for the Move tool, hold Shift, click anywhere on the image, drag it up to the new tab and let go. And now it's going to be positioned and directly into the center hit control or command or i'm sorry control or command yes control or command i wanted to say option i don't know i use a pc macintosh is just weird so hit control or command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out hold alter option grab one of the corner transform controls resize the entire image to fit the rectangle now before i hit enter we have a design choice to make so what i like to do for my instagram story is i don't want people to see the full file the full picture as much as they can get in the rectangle itself because then why go to my instagram and hit hard and leave me a comment saying wow you're so amazing and i love your pictures can i be like you yes you can for a small fee so anyway what i like to do is to resize it to create some kind of intrigue so I'm moving it around grabbing one of the corner bounding boxes do we leave it over like this and then I can put the mention hashtag of her name or Phoenix fashion or something down there do I push it over here so she's looking off into the document this way but we're losing the Sun you have a lot of different options here so get a little bit creative don't necessarily use your story to be yet another just simple view of your artwork so in this case i think this kind of looks good yes i'm cutting off one of her hands but if i go up here it just feels kind of funky let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit more maybe we make it just a tad bigger so it's more about her face and so forth that's kind of interesting and then i could see some text going here or some of the other labels that you can put in your stories so i'm going to hit enter now keep in mind because i've zoomed in this close it's potentially possible they might see some of the pixelation in this but ultimately if somebody's looking at my instagram story on their phone i doubt they're going to zoom in to be like well that's pixelated and that doesn't look good he must have used file compression so once this all looks good i'm going to hit controller command and the number zero to zoom all the way back out i would go through the same process again come up to layer flatten image so that I have one document, then come to file, export, save for the web. It's good at its quality of 100, JPEG, all that good file format and the stuff. And then I would save it into the folder for social media files. And I would simply label it again, Phoenix Fashion at Beautiful Sunset Instagram Story. And that's how I differentiate my different files. So let's have some final thoughts and finish up this tutorial today. The key element that I want you to take away from today's tutorial is not image size. Image size changes all the time with Facebook and Instagram. It will change every year, sometimes two or three times within the year itself. But if you go to Google and type in preferred image size Facebook 2020, you'll find many different resources to stay on top of that information. The takeaway from the video today that I want you to remember is naming your files, SEO optimization, SEO optimization is an industry within itself, and there is so much to learn about it. But you can help yourself get a little bit further ahead in your goal as an artist, which is to be discovered. Yes, you may do your artwork for yourself, and that's totally fine. But if you have any goal to be paid for your work or to seek new opportunities to create interesting artwork with other people, or just to have people see the artwork, changing the file names using certain keywords like 
The genre of photography, your physical location of where you are, will help you to be discovered, will help people to find your artwork. So start exploring changing your file names to things like Fashion Photography Phoenix, Arizona, Beautiful Sunset, instead of Girl Sunset 2. And you stand a greater chance of getting your artwork out there into the world. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like the content you found today, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks again, and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.